Thank you, Ali, and thank you, everyone, and welcome, Rob. Lovely to see you. Nice, nice to see you, again, well, Matt. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. We've had a few of these chats over the years. Always <laughs> yes, yeah. Now, I've got to say happy birthday to Washington H. Sol Patterson. 120 years listed this year. That's long-term investing. Um, and I'm not sure what Caleb Sol would have thought in 1872 when he opened that first, I think, yeah. pharmacy, was it? Yeah, yeah. That he thought maybe he'd be running a $12 billion empire yeah. 130, 40 years later. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Well, you know, as you said, it's re more than remarkable. It's astounding that um, I can sit here as a fourth generation of a company that my great-grandfather started way back, you know, before we, we actually listed 120 years ago, but he actually started in, in the 1880s. So um, to be able to de deliver the... Um, the there they are, everyone. That's the return since 01, the yeah. dividends, which we'll talk about yeah. in a sec, but keep going, Rob. And you know, to, to see something like that, the, the, the only company to 120 years, we've never missed paying a dividend. And when you think about those periods of times, we've gone through the war years, the Great Depression, the GFC recently, and, and, and even COVID. But to um, you know, to, to have a track record like that, and we're now the only company in the last 20 years that's actually increased our our dividend every year as well. So terrific effort. Now, before we kick on, also congratulations on the Order of Australia to, to uh, the right. business community and I think um, official or administration of rugby union. So. It's a nice, yeah. nice combination. Yeah, well it's, it's, it's something, in, you know, in, you never think of you're going to get honoured like that, but it's certainly a, a great honour. And, and obviously um, that doesn't come about. I've, I've got, uh, I think there's three or four of our staff are here today. Um, the reason why we've done so well over a long period of time is we've got good people. Um, and I've always been a great believer that without good people, you don't have a business. Uh, people can bugger something up pretty quickly, but um, <laughs> good people can keep it going. Okay, so when I look at the uh, Washington H. Sol Pattinson annual report, it says the company's objectives is to grow the portfolio, increase cash generation for reliable dividend growth, and manage investment risk. There's the evidence. So you're living the yeah. you're living what you're telling everyone. Um, but at this point in time, we can't tell anyone about results because you're just about to deliver all your results. Oh, yeah. All the big companies, um, yeah. there's Brickworks in a couple of weeks, old Pat's on the 28th of September, so we can't talk numbers. But that doesn't stop us talking about other things. Um, now, Sol's, he's got an incredible portfolio. You, straight, you go right across the economy. You've got telecommunication, you've got bricks in Brickworks, you've got uh, property in Brickworks also and elsewhere. Um, you obviously got coal with um, New Hope, structured debt, you're just about everywhere. Yeah. So let's start with the broad picture and come in a little bit from there. Where are we in the business cycle? And do you think it's a, the next 12 months is going to offer you up a good time to invest some of that capital that you've got? Well, we're hoping. Um, we've got a very large nest egg that is sitting in the bank. At least we're getting 5% for that at the moment. But um, we, um, we've, we've thought we might have had some attractive um, opportunities by now, but um, you know, um, things are still in some places reasonably strong. Um, you know, we're, we're in this high energy cost environment, high labour cost. Um, interest rates are still affecting a lot of people and we've got inflation. So um, we're quietly confident that you know, we, we, we can start to see some, some, some bargain hunting coming in the next few months or early in the new year. We certainly... Um, well positioned for it. But but you don't think it, you want to be too anxious about it? You've got time on your side, is yeah. that what you're telling us? Yeah. No, we, we've always been very, very patient. I can remember when um, we came out of, um, uh, this is New Hope, came out of Indonesia and um, we bought $500 million back from that and then we sold a, an, an asset to, um, to BHP and we had over a billion dollars for five or six years and people kept pestering me, what are you going to do with a billion dollars? Then eventually... We bought the second lowest uh, cost producer coal mine, Bengala, at the bottom of the market. So we've always been patient investors. Um, we never borrowed money until the recent um, interest rates were virtually zero. And um, Todd suggested we, with, with rates so cheap, that we probably should buy, buy that's a little bit. Barlow, you see. Top Barlow, yep. yep. Um, that we probably should probably borrow some money. So that's the first time ever that the company's um, ever borrowed any money, which is another staggering figure. Just with that, a couple of years ago, you did probably the biggest deal you've ever done with the Milton acquisition, yeah, no, yeah. another listed investment company. But since then, since, you, since it's come into the group, you've been gradually reducing your exposure to that 
listed investment company space and your listed investments. Yeah. Why is that? Is that a realignment because you're overweight or are you negative markets in yeah. general? And Well, I think of that photo that was up there a minute ago, that pie chart, people can probably see that. If we go back to that, yeah. Um, when Milton had it in round figures around $4 billion in equities, um, we've reduced our exposure down. I think that's got 26% there now. That's um, around about 20% now. That's in large cap. That's excluding investments like TPG and um, Brickworks and New Hope, et cetera. This is actually a, a large cap portfolio. And that's what's given us a lot of this ex 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 excess cash that's putting us in this position now that we do get some sort of a downturn. We can move pretty quickly. And that, that was a... So it's a realignment of what, what yeah. your, your portfolio should look like overall. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to being worried about the yeah. equity market. And if you have a lot up there, we, 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 you know, we don't want to be too overexposed to one part of the, the yeah. market. Diversification, that's yeah. right. So um, is there another deal like Milton? Because it was a terrific, and I know you're involved with Milton for a long time prior, yeah. Yeah. but to bring the two together, it's turned out that that's been a great source of capital. Yeah. And they're, they're, it turned out quite well for the company as well, the way the deal yeah. uh, was structured. Yeah. But is there any other deals? Is, is there, could we see... <laughs> Soul Pat's doing an affic or a um, no, 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 no. Well, even a wham or someone like that. I don't, I don't think it's appropriate to talk about those sort of things here, but <laughs> but it was know, a very, it was a very good deal, yeah, and it took yeah. Soul Pat's to yeah. the next level. Yeah, no, we were obviously um, we've got a very smart team in our investment bank, Pit Capital Partners, and um, the guys are all always got their ears and eyes open. And I think one of the other things when you look up there, when you see the structured yield and um, private equity. Um, the way we've grown over the last probably eight to ten years, people used to come and see us and we were number eight or ten on the list if someone was raising money or they had an idea. So you could usually guess by the time they came to us, they were pretty bloody desperate. But, but now with our track record and the people we've got, we're now very early, you know, early on. So if we, if we see a deal, we know there's not many other people been showing it. Yep. So we, we've been able to build ourselves up into that position where we're seeing some of the very good deals that are out at the moment. Terrific. So I'll come back to that a bit later, but let's go into the actual investments, the ones that you've controlled over the years and have been big players. At the moment, you're in right in the heart of the energy transition that's going yeah, on, yeah. that's um, going to unfold over the next couple of decades um, with the New Hope coal assets. It, it's an interesting industry, but Australia, obviously, and the world needs coal to do this transition. Can you give us a bit of a feel of how you see the, the future of thermal coal and what will be happening over the next couple of decades, especially in relation to your investment? Well, we use Wood Mackenzie a lot and um, there are people around the world are still building coal-fired power stations. Even places like Greece are building coal-fired power stations as we speak. And they have a 25 to 35 year lifespan. So Australia has the most efficient and cleanest coal in the world. So we should be providing coal to these new assets. So I can see we've got a, a, a good future in coal in Australia. If you have a look again at Wood Mackenzie, they've, they've got the graph of coming off sort of marginally down in, in, in tonnages, but there's still a, a good demand for coal going going out. And our, our leases all expire by the end of 1939 anyway, so we're not going to be affected by 2050. And the other thing is, I, I can see no reason why in Australia, as we've always had the cheapest energy, why are we paying double for our power? Well, it's, it's criminal. We all want to go down that renewable cycle, but until we get enough battery, enough wind, enough solar, if you want to go nuclear or hydrogen, then it's a bit like a car. You don't sell your car until you've got another one. <laughs> you know, well, some it's, it's staggering. <laughs> I'm, I'm just blown away by, the, by what's happening in the world. And I don't know what people have seen in Sweden... Sweden have given 2050 away, and Britain two weeks ago announced a whole lot of new um, oil and um, gas leases to be approved. So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a long hard journey, and it's going to be difficult to to meet. But it sounds like you think you've got in, in you hope um, a very important role to play, and and it'll also be good for um, salt pats in the sense that there's going to be a lot of cash that comes out of that business yeah. because yeah. prices should should stay very high in that yeah. period, shouldn't they? And we're, we're a very responsible coal miner. New, New Hope's been leading the, the country in rehab um, with the Department of Agriculture in Queensland. We've been rehabbing uh, country and, and having uh, cattle trials on it, and this cattle have performed very well. So we're, we're actually responsible um, entities of, of, of operations. And we're now starting to look at um, on some of those old rehab areas, whether we can do anything on the, on the renewable front. 
But you, you so, have spent an incredible cash cow over a long period of time. I think it's paid out about one point four billion dollars just in special dividends. It's been incredible. Yeah. 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 That, but you've you've taken me where I want to go. That <laughs> renewable component. Um Salt Pats has been interesting in the sense that it's been very nimble over the years. If you I know we're talking about long term investing, but yeah. very shrewd investing at various points in time. Uh, energy transition, we'll, we'll hear it on the panel later. Everyone's interested in it. E everyone's keen to see. Would, would, would Salt Pats, do they see an opportunity, whether it be in the metals themselves? I know, I know you've got some exposure there, copper, nickel, yeah. lithium, or in the actual uh, end results, like you know, uranium, wind, yeah. solar, yeah. anything like that. Does that interest you and you think there's an opportunity there for Salt Pats? Well, as I mentioned, we're in New Hope are looking very, very seriously at that. Um, we do have a small inv investment in a company called M Control, which we now own 100% of. They're a Newcastle-based, um, have been predominantly a um, underground um, provider of uh, coal mining equipment, and now they're moving into the renewable space and generation generators and various items that go in with renewables. But we all we all know anyone with any common sense knows that if it, we need to come into that renewable field in some way. But you can't you come come back into it five five minutes ago. All these things take time. If I gave you an approval now for a copper mine, it's going to take you five or seven years to get full production out of that copper mine. And we're closing down all the um, gas and coal and petroleum, and we're not going to have any lithium or copper or cobalt. So we've got to sharpen up here and get some more approvals, and the government have got to encourage people to have some processing plants because we don't want to be sending all this um, lithium and copper and set to China, we should be doing it ourselves. So it sounds like when we talk energy transition, the word transition is the key. It's well, going to be difficult yeah, to manage. Yeah. These things, you know, like people don't need, need, don't like nuclear, but you've got these old coal-fired power stations where the wiring is sitting there. Surely we can build some nuclear, uh, little nuclear plants in that position there to use, use the wiring. We've got to build thousands and thousands of kilometres of new wiring. Right. So I'll take that as a yes. You will look at all oh, good. different yeah. investments. We're, we're open to anything. Yep. And that's why we're, over the years we've had TV stations, we've had coal mining, we've had all sorts of different investments. We've just put a lot of money into agriculture. So, Well, let, let's switch gears and turn to BRICS, um, which has been one of the, the miracles of Sol Pats over the years because Brickworks, a brick kiln company that um, services the market, but... As we know, the powerhouse with under Brickworks has been the property yeah, that's yeah. been used over time and then um, no longer useful for bricks yeah. that you've been able to, along with Goodman's, put into the trust. And it's been a powerhouse. Let's just start with bricks, though. Bricks got a good future in Australia. What do you think will move to uh, maybe lighter, different products over time? Well, if you want to build something that's going to last, people have been to Europe and had a look at the uh, roof tiles on buildings and um, bricks in People in places in Europe have been there for 100 years. It's a very stable um, product to use. A lot of these new lightweight products, are, the builders are having trouble with the seven-year warranties. But, again, we're faced in Australia with the manufacturing cost of producing bricks. Their gas prices have gone through the roof. Um, we've permanently got somebody from council or government telling us we need to put a scrubber on here or, or do something there. The cost of manufacturing in Australia is out of control. Mm -hmm. and we, We're seeing that. We just put our prices up by 8% and then they're not even, not even covering our costs. So it's, it's very difficult, but very fortunate our forebears who bought the land where the clay was were very smart people and went out where there's a, now a lot of money, particularly out the M4, M7 out there, mm. where we've got this massive operation with, with um, Goodman. And we've also got some large um, tracts of land in um, Melbourne, which are starting you're to look very, You're very optimistic about Melbourne, I think. Because you haven't developed that land like no, you have in Sydney, no, and it's no. in, in pretty good yeah. positions yeah. for you to yeah. to extract value out. Was that yeah. right? But again, we've been dealing with councils, and anyone in this room that deals with councils knows that things don't happen very quickly. But um, fortunately, it's been zoned industrial, and it's on one of the big freeways, so we're, we're confident we can get going there. Yeah, and Melbourne could produce something like Sydney's delivered over the last decade or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't bring a B double or a road train down Parramatta Road anymore. You know, you've got to go out where the big ring roads are. And, yep. yep. Um, and before we leave bricks, would you ever, given what you said about manufacturing tough in this country, um, would you ever walk away from bricks, do you think? Well, it's difficult. There's, uh, there's only um, two competitors now. Um, I'm not saying that we, we would or we wouldn't, but um, 
it's, it's got its challenges, but we all need new homes. You said that the government last night have announced this massive program of new housing. Yep. Um, and if you want something that's going to last, you obviously build it out of something that's solid. So there's a future there. And you've moved Brickworks into the US. You've, you bought assets there. Um, I imagine that's a bit different market to Australia. You're optimistic about the US or, or do you think it's more strategic? And once again, does, is it the land and the property that you developed um, the key to that extraction of value? Well, again, we would have gone there. Lizzie Partridge worked in America with CSR, so we knew um, how the American operations. It's a very fragmented market. A lot of families um, owned all the various businesses, and they absolutely got flattened over there after the GFC. The, the building cycle just fell off a, off a cliff. Um, so it's very fragmented, but if you go to New York, it's, people have been to New York. Next time you go and have a look, there's a lot of bricks there. Um, we're the closest operator to... to um, to New York, but again, we do have some property, but you know, it's early stages and we're going to make it work. Okay. Telecommunications, 5G, you've come a long way since Channel 9 in Newcastle, <laughs> I mean, where you started with it, that was bought, I think, in pretty tough times. It was a good acquisition. That's turned into eventually TPG and now to us up in Singapore, so you've taken that international, the investments. 5G, good future there. I mean, it's a tough market, yeah. but it's the future yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, very pleasing. Um, Celsa had some common sense not so long ago to put the prices up instead of having a fight with Optus who could, you know, have the cheapest packings. So you're so cheering them on? We pardon? You're cheering them on? Yeah. Well, you have to. As I said before, the people's costs of doing business have gone up horrifically, so people have got to keep putting their prices up. Um, 5G, yeah, David T.O. is very, very confident in what 5G can do. You know, we've come a long way from 2G, mm. and there's now even talk in that industry of 6G, so, you know, we're all, we're all so dependent. Everyone's got one of these phones these days that we're all so dependent on it. Yeah, so that could take us to the next level of that mass communication. Well, obviously, yeah. Yeah, so a good place to be. Yeah. Yeah, not like someone like me who still reads a newspaper in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not worried about you. We're worried about all these people, <laughs> what they're spending their money on. Let's go back to where we were talking about. The, you, you took Milton, and that's been quite a, a big injection of capital for the group. And you've taken some of that capital as you've sold down and, and moved into some other areas. Um, structured debt and private equity have become uh, two, two areas where you talk about a lot now in your investor presentations. Mm -hmm. Structured debt, is that um, being triggered by the fact that the banks have, the four big banks have kind of removed themselves from a lot of uh, various lending and concentrate on the home market? Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that the opportunity? Yeah, that and, and there's always people wanting to do something in, with finance and private equity and these sorts of things. And as I said, you know, we've got good people and we've got a good track record. So people are coming to us and um, you saw up there, I think, um, six to $800 in each. And then those figures there in April and we've actually grown it since then. So we see a good future then. We've got some very, very good people running it. And do, do you prefer to be a lender than a borrower? Yeah. Because you'd never yeah. like to borrow. I, 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 hope pay, that. I hope I never pay 14 or 15% which some of these people are paying. But you don't mind lending the money no, to no. them? No, that's where the opportunities are. <laughs> and, yeah, we're, we're very sensible. We, we're not lending to Blind Freddy, but, you know, we we we, 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 um, we do, a, again, we've got a very, very good team. We, we're very, very thorough on our DD. Um, we quite often knock a lot of, a lot of deals back. And uh, give, give us an idea of what you're lending the money out. It's pretty good margins. Oh, I don't, I don't want to go through all that. Don't want to do that. No, but, you know, they're, they're, they're good businesses. They're stable businesses, but I'd rather not go into the... Yeah, that's okay. The that's nitty gritty okay. of it. And what about the private equity, which is interesting because um, I, know, I know you've been involved in unlisted businesses yeah, before, but yeah. you, you've always been a bit partial to having something listed. If I look back in the history, but here you are with private equity. Um, it, it obviously has different risk parameters that you haven't got that liquidity, yeah, yeah. but you probably have a little bit more say in how the businesses are run. Is that is that a fair comment? And that's yeah, attractive. Yeah. And we're not adverse of, of co-investing with people. And as I mentioned, we would probably put four or five hundred million dollars into agriculture. We, we classify that as, as as private equity. Good future in agriculture in Australia. You, well, you've got your farm in Cowra. I know you know ag very well. <laughs> you love um, it on the farm. But um, yeah, yeah we've, we, we, we've got in mostly down in, in the Riverina. We've bought a lot of water. We're into, into citrus and table grapes. Um, coming from rural background, you know, we need to feed the world. Um, and water? You think water's water, a great water, asset, do you? Water's very valuable, even though the government keep letting it all run out into the, into the ocean from South Australia. Every, every time I fly over on the um, 
Qantas fly to Adelaide, you fly right over the mouth of the Murray and there's water runs out there every day. We're not saving enough water. Mm -hmm. But there is a big future in agriculture for Australia. Right. Is that because we just do it well, we've got a competitive advantage? Yeah. yeah. And we, we've got the acreage out here and we're very good at, um, at doing what we're doing, particularly in those irrigated citruses and table grapes, et cetera. Yep. And, and so that, that brings me to another question. Um, you, you have moved offshore in, in a small way. You've been to the US, you're up in Singapore in some of your investments. Um, has Australia got a good future? But this is where Solpats has been one of the great beneficiaries of being a player in the Australian market. Yeah. Are, you, are you bullish about Australia because you've, you've, you've told us manufacturing's hard, yeah. but overall, are, are you optimistic? It's a wonderful country. We've done famously well, but I think we're making it very hard for ourselves. As I said, why are we paying double for, for electricity? Our labour rates are out of control. Um, we can't get approvals. Um, I just hope that somewhere along the line, as I mentioned before, that we will start processing some of our own um, uh, metals, etc. Mm -hmm. We get more opportunity to produce some more copper and lithium mines and these sorts of things. So this There's idea about lithium being uh, processed onshore. Yeah, why are we sending it all to China? Yep. Like, this is a wonderful country. We've got to make sure we keep going. And we've got so far because we've had cheap energy. I don't like to keep highlighting that, but it's a fact. Australia has done so well because they had cheap energy for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> you like Australia, yeah, yeah, but we've got yeah, we've got yeah. some it's, hurdles it, to clear. It has become more difficult over a recent period of time, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, everyone always wants to know, and you, you've um, mentioned it briefly. What Salt Pats have always got the next deal coming around the corner. <laughs> um, can you give us any insights of what things you'd be looking at? Because what you've done in the past is invested in very long-term assets, yeah. and, and we'll get to. Don't worry, James is going to. James Marlowe is going to kill me because we missed the poll question earlier, but it might be better at the end, so we'll yeah. come back to it. But long-term assets, because you take big investments, they're not they're not like the rest of us where we can buy it one day, sell it the next. You're in for the for the long haul. What are some of the areas that you would consider? It's an interesting question you ask because quite often we sit around the sales board table now and we think of a business with it. Would that business still be here in 10 years with the massive change we're having in technology, for example? Yep. Um, what interests us most is when we look at an investment is, is people. Um, unless you've got good people, and I think we've one of the reasons, I said not one of the reasons, but the main reason we, what we've done so well and we're still here is we've had excellent people. Um, and we've got to make sure you do our, our, our due diligence properly. Mm -hmm. But we've been in TV stations, we're in telecommunications, we're in coal mining. So there's, there's nothing that scares us mm -hmm. and it's got to be a good cash producing asset because it, as you've seen in that chart earlier, we're able to increase our dividend every year. So it's got to be a good cash producing asset as well. But we're not, we're not scared of going anywhere. I, I gather you're not in a hurry, but if I said to you the next 18 months, do you think you'll do a major deal? I would have thought so. Right. Yeah. There's a few things on the desk. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I won't push you hard on that. We're getting towards the end. Can we put the results up for the poll? So because it's souls, we've got to go, How? how what's the longest holding? I can't read that. I'll read it down here. More than 10 years, 48% of you have said. Between five and 10 years, 30%. Between two and five. Well, long-term investors in the crowd as well, Rob. So they're, they're, they're with you. Now, I've got to ask the same question of you. Longest investment you've ever done? Obviously, Sal Pattinson. Uh, that's yeah, that's about 130 years, I yeah, think. Yeah. And, and obviously, our probably longest investment would be New Hope. New Hope. Do you remember when you first went into coal? Yes, it was a broken down old asset in Ipswich. And quite often we called it No Hope for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and then a guy called um, Frank Robertson had a, had a son called Graham, who's the brother of the guy that used to do the. Um, um, I've got a mental block now, I can't think of his name. Graham was one of the sons. And he um, went up to Indonesia and got involved with the granddaughter of the Sultan of Jogjakarta. And we came across the Adaro mine, which we developed. And um, at that period of time, we went through a, a price of coal like it was um, five or six years ago, um, where the banks wouldn't lend us any money. So that's the reason why Sol Pattinson ended up owning 
60 percent in Europe because we were the ones. You were the bank. Had the money. <laughs> so we developed that asset from from a hole in the in the jungle of 25 million ton uh, asset, which was staggering to say to watch something like that grow, which is unbelievable. Talk about not being scared. Got to be brave to do that. And I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm, this could be even scarier than the whole questions I've asked you. I know you, you're pretty keen on your rugby yeah. and you're going to go to the World Cup. So can you give us a tip for the winner of the World Cup? I'm going on Thursday night and um, I watched Wales play Fiji yesterday. Oh, I got my doubts now that we can beat those. But I would have thought France, France, um, South Africa and Ireland would be the three. Fight, fight it out. Fight it out at the end. That's a good bunch. Very good. All right, I'm going to say that runs our time out. I'm going to say thank you to Rob Milner. Um, Chairman of Washington H. Sol Patterson. Another great chat, Rob. Thank you. Lovely to see you.